In the year 1491, a storm at sea caused Spanish seafarers to abandon their ship and head for shore. When they ended up landing on the shores of Madeira, they thought they had reached the end of the world. Remember, in 1491, people still believed the world was flat. The sight of dark clouds clinging to the peaks of high mountains frightened the medieval explorers so much, they believed they had reached the gates of Hades. They were, to say the least, reluctant to come closer to Madeira. They overcame their fear and landed in this bay, where the town of Machico stands today. According to local legend, Machico was named for Roberta Machico. As the story goes, she and her lover escaped from England, where their love affair was prohibited. This supposedly occurred a hundred years prior to the first Portuguese sailors landing here. It is difficult to determine whether this story is real or fabricated. In any case, a statue of the Portuguese captain, Tristal Vaz Teixeira, who commanded the Portuguese exploration, stands in front of the local church. Madeira lies 500 kilometers from the African coastline. The volcanic eruption lifted the island from the depths of the ocean. The steep walls of the island extend five kilometers into the ocean, and its highest peak rises 1,862 meters above sea level. Tourist guides often point out that Madeira is more suited for gazing than for bathing. Despite being considered the gate to Hades, Madeira is a very extraordinary work of nature. The island is only 40 kilometers across, but the nature of Madeira is so diverse that you may feel as if you have just traversed an entire continent. We begin in the southern part of the island. Here, the Gabo Garau cliff juts 600 meters out of the sea. It is the second highest cliff in Europe. The semi-island Sao Lorenzo stretches eastward. Its wild coastline resembles Norwegian fjords. The island's interior is wilder still. Volcanic activity formed an enchanting mountain range. Its beauty can be compared to that of the Alps or the Rocky Mountains. Only a few meters higher, we emerge through the cover of clouds onto the Paul de Serra Plateau. Its rugged, windswept landscape could make you believe you are on the moors of the Scottish Highlands. Sharp peaks that snatch the passing clouds account for Madeira's specific microclimate. The weather here is extremely changeable as a result of Atlantic currents and strong winds. That's why the weather forecasts are only released with a 10 to 30% accuracy rating. It often happens that while tourists in the southern part are sunbathing, torrential rains are lashing the northern part, and the mountains in the interior are being blanketed with snow. Madeira is sometimes called the island of the never-ending spring. In the north, in the higher altitudes, the locals seek to collect the rainfall. The inhabitants of Madeira long ago devised a complex system of irrigation canals called lavadas. These canals, stretching over 2,150 kilometers, distribute water to the entire island. A picturesque ensemble is created by thousands of colorful fields dispersed throughout the terraces on steep slopes. The cultivation of such fields has always been rather challenging, rendering the use of modern technology here useless. For many centuries on Madeira, agriculture has been the main source of sustenance, but sometimes the land failed to cooperate. To facilitate their ability to respond to land, the people built these quaint little houses. The small dwellings with straw roofing were portable, so that when necessary, the farmers could move easily. As a result, farmers could make the tedious journey to the secluded and inaccessible fields as they required.
The complicated accessibility of arable land was aided by an extremely favorable climate for agriculture. Perhaps that explains why some refer to Madeira as the garden in bloom in the middle of the Atlantic. The mild climate is suitable for the growing of vegetables, exotic fruits, and even flowers, a fact that becomes obvious in the marketplace. In the time of medieval expeditionary sea voyages, Madeira was used as a naval base. The ships stopped here to refresh their food supplies en route to unknown, faraway lands. They also refilled their casks of wine. A strong spirit was added to the wine to prevent it from going bad in hot weather and long journeys. The tough life in the rocky terrain affected not only the local agriculture, but the means of travel. A sled is commonly associated with winter and snow. In Madeira, however, a sled is used year-round to facilitate transportation from the hillsides to the valleys. Today, this means of transportation is primarily used as a tourist attraction. The skill with which the men operate their sled is remarkable. The wicker sled hurtles downhill at a speed of 35 miles per hour. To control it, one requires special leather shoes with reinforced soles and years of experience. Considering the rugged topography of the island, Constructing the local airport demanded considerable ingenuity. Given the lack of flat surfaces on the island, the runway had to be constructed so as to protrude above the sea. This unique construction resembles a giant aircraft carrier. Therefore, the pilots must operate their aircraft with absolute precision. The smallest mistake could result in tragedy. We will complete our exploration of Madeira right here, at the top of Pico Ruivo. Now, we will carry on in the shadows of Portuguese seafarers towards Asia. <laughs>